Okay. There you go. All right. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to Big Oggy World. Welcome to the Christmas list. It carries on. It does carry on. It does. What a carry on it is. Talk about Christmas. Carry on. You can't have carry on films at Christmas. It's, it's tradition. It's blinking relentless is what it is. It is. Any double entendre do you want to do today? No, uh, not Do you like our little furry muffs? I do love a furry muff. Very cute. Yeah, new new uh, new microphones. The old ones were playing up, so um, I got new ones. We did. Itty bitty muffs. Now, what are we doing today? We are doing Clementine custard tarts. Clementine custard tarts. It's a kind of twist on a Portuguese custard tart. It looks exactly like a Portuguese custard tart. It is. We got it from the latest BBC Good Food magazine, which is probably the January edition now. It's not oh, the same it edition. December on it. Oh, well. But it's the latest one. It's just come out. Yeah. So I also saw this today online on their website. So they're obviously pushing it quite heavily. So we're going to do it. Well, you know, Clementines are the one thing that tends to be around a lot at Christmas. It, the whole house smells of Christmas right now. Because we've got exactly. a Christmas tree over there, which is the real one, with pine. And we've got Clementines that we've just juiced and zest and all those things. Right. So I'm going to get behind the camera and get out of your way. Okay. And um, enjoy. So, as normal... Welcome all, to Kelly's Kitchen, by the way. All of the ingredients will be listed in the description below. But we're going to start off with the juice of six clementines. So that goes into a small saucepan. I did a fine job doing those, by the way. You did a brilliant time. job. Hmm. I zested them, you juiced them. And what we need to do is put that onto a medium heat, bring it up to a boil and reduce it until that amount of juice goes to about 50 mils. So probably by about half, I'd say. Yeah, I was gonna say about half. It's as long as it takes, obviously, some Absolutely. time to juice your others. But do it over a medium heat. Don't sort of try and rush it with a high heat. You're not making jam here. You're Absolutely. Just reducing it. And here we go. It, apparently, it could take up to 20 minutes. So I suggest you go and make a cup of tea and I'll bring you back when I've done it. Fair enough. So as you can see, we're down to approximately 50 mils now. It's gone nice and thick. And so... We're going to turn that off and leave it to cool. It's taken a bit longer than we expected. Well, it did say it could take up to 20 minutes. But and it did. But I'm sure the results will be worth it. Like I said, it really depends how much juice you've got to create in the first place. So, what's next, my darling? Next is the pastry. Okay, so it was be allowed out to cool because that's going to be used as part of the custard that we make that later. Is, that's, that's going to make the clementine flavour of the custard. So the next thing we need to do is to get our pastry. It's a sheet of ready-made puff pastry and open that out. I'll be back in one second. I've just forgotten something. What did you forget, darling? I forgot a little bit of flour to put on my table. Well, you're getting all sticky. Well, I'm hoping it won't, but... I'll go back to the carry-on films again. Who were... So, one sheet of ready-made puff pastry. Yeah, let's be honest, let's not make your own. Puff pastry is not the easiest things to make. And it's really cheap to buy and really good quality when you buy it. People have got better things to do with their time than make puff pastry. Absolutely. So, one sheet of puff pastry. Now, what we're going to do is we zested three of the clementines and this is said zest obviously wash them before you do that um you're going to sprinkle about two thirds of this zest all over the pastry because obviously this is gonna flavor it all now we used a little zester we've got a little zesting tool which was great and then we chopped up afterwards yep. um, but you can use a grater just be careful you don't take too much of the white of the pith that's the thing so, sort of push it down a little bit, thus, and then what we're going to do then is starting from one of the short ends, we are going to attempt, anyway, to roll this tightly up again. Oh, 
And once you've got it turned, you can probably use the grease proof to help you roll it. A bit like a Swiss roll, it takes a while to get started, but once you get it started, it's not a problem. Like so. So you're making like a pinwheel. You are. Roll it up. And then you can take it off of your grease proof and put it on your table. Give it a roll. And then what we need to do then is take a knife and chop this pastry into 12 equal circles. So if we go for half first, and then thirds, yeah? Um, yeah, half and then third and a third, yeah, there. So you moved it further. Third, there. Yeah, fine. That's I've one. got a wonky eye, so I'm just, you know, guessing. So that's six, six. and then we need Split to do halves again. again. There we go. Lovely. One. Two. So obviously you don't need to see all this bit. We'll come back. So you have all your little pieces. I do. I'm going to put a bit more flour on the table. And then you take your piece sideways up like that. And you sort of need to squish it down and you're going to roll it into about a 10 centimeter circle. I'm not very good with measurements, so I'm just going to take my muffin tin and try and sort of lay it in and see if it's enough or not. I think that would be perfect. Once you've done one, you can kind of guess the dimensions of the rest. That's pretty good to me. I'm going to get covered in flour. Yeah, trust mind. you to wear black on the day you're going baking. You it's do love very a challenge. cold at the minute. So black helps, does it? Or is that just thicker No, clothing? it's just my favourite cardigan. So there we are. 12 little cups of puff pastry. Not perfect but this is rustic you know. Yeah, these are Portuguese tarts. Have you ever exactly. seen one perfect? Never. No. So as you can see you can see all of the um, clementine zest in them so they're going to be very orangey too. Um, now these are done, they're going to go in the fridge and wait while we make the custard, but I need to check first that the clementine juice is cool enough to be able to whisk eggs in, because what we don't want is scrambled. So these are going to go in the fridge and wait, and in the meantime I've preheated my oven to 180 degrees. Okay, so pastries in the fridge cooling, clementine juice reduced and cool. So the next step now is we're going to make a custard. So to start off with, you're going to add your eggs into a larger pan. So we've got five egg yolks. And two full eggs. Full eggs, yep. Yeah. Then you're going to add the rest of your zest. Two tablespoons of caster sugar. two tablespoons of corn flour, that stuff always sticks. That's the thing about corn flour, it's super fine. And then the clementine juice, make sure you scrape every bit of this out because this is your goodness. That's your flavour. Like 
to whisk this together to combine it. Don't worry about the lumps at this stage. John, do you want to give this a quick whisk for me? My arms are hurting today. Okay. Just give it... It doesn't need to be bean, just give it a good mix. Yeah, I will say, you're very brave today. You've been struggling a lot with pain for two days due to the fibromyalgia. Um, we're lucky to get one recipe done today. Yeah. We do have a bunch ready for the rest of the series, I guess, nearly. So mm -hmm. we'll get some done in a couple of days when you're feeling a bit better. Hopefully. That's lovely, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. So, now you've got that lot mixed in, you need to gradually add your milk. And again, this is to basically, you want sort of a smooth custard, so take your time with it. And as you can see, we've got no lumps now. The only thing you can see floating are bits of clementine zest. As we've said many times before on this channel, Cooking is relaxing. No point in trying to rush it and throw everything in and hope it's all going to work and then it goes wrong. Take your time. It's better to enjoy it. You've got to put it on the heat yet or not? There we go. Right, so the next thing to do is to put it back on your heat. You need a medium to low heat. And you need to keep whisking at it so that it starts to thicken and comes to sort of a, what would you call it? A simmer, but a rolling simmer. So not so that you can just stick your finger in it. It's a little bit warmer than that, but you'll know because it'll get thicker. You can actually usually feel it thickening on the bottom of your pan before it gets there. So it's taken a little while, about six or seven minutes maybe, but now it's going thick. We now have a thick custard. You literally think you think you're going to go on forever and nothing's happening and then suddenly it goes, doesn't it? So I'm going to take it off the heat and pour it into a jug. That's not wasting it. That's just licking hot custard. So nothing. Yummy. Right. I did actually ask you off camera why there was there no vanilla in it because it's custard, but then it is a clementine custard, it not is. a vanilla custard. So. so we're going to leave that now to cool for a little while. It doesn't have to be cold, cold, but just cooler than it is. And then we are going to fill our Tarts. tart cases almost to the top and we're going to bake them. But Please make sure to occasionally stir that otherwise you'll yeah, get skin. It does say to stir it otherwise you will get skin. So I'm just going to clear up this and then I'll be back ready to fill my cases and we can bake them. So custard's cooled slightly. Don't want it too cold because I don't want it to go completely thick. Um, make a mess don't care the tin is out of the freeze uh, fridge so we're going to fill the custard until they're almost to the top 
and then they're going to go in the oven for between 18 and 22 minutes apparently yeah it's a different unusual kind of number but we suggest you start looking at them for about 18. so you're looking obviously for the pastry cases to be golden brown and the custard will be slightly browned also i mean most of you have seen a portuguese custard tart you know what they look like This is when we're thinking, have we got enough custard? Yes, we've got enough custard. Woohoo! Do you know why that's a woohoo? Because there's a bit of spare. I do love a bit of spare custard. Oh, not be much, is there? No, there's why? not that's... much. Well done, it's a BBC Good Food magazine, because that's about perfect measurements. I think so. There we go. Okay. So they're going into the oven at 180 for 18 minutes and then we'll check them. Okay, so are they done? They are done. They have been in 17 and a half, almost 18, yeah, nearly minutes. 18 minutes. We do have quite a fierce oven, so we kind of guessed from 15 onwards, didn't we? And kept looking. So now we need to leave them in the tray to cool completely. So once they're cool completely, we will take them out the tin and have a little taste test and show you. Hi, darling. Hi. Right, um, please note you're in the dressing game. Yeah. You're off to bed. I'm going to bed, I'm not yeah. well. Yeah, not looking good. Um, we took the mics off as well, hopefully it'll be okay. So, how do we get on? I think they look really good. They look really good. They do, I'm gonna do a little They're video still close up while you're- uh, warm. While you're doing that, you carry on. But. They look. Really good. Yeah, they're still slightly warm, so it's yeah, a little bit so soft on the pastry, but that's fine. You got a bit. They look really good. The important thing is how they really taste. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, they've got a bit crispier yet. Mm -hmm. Good. Oh, really good, aren't they? Because they're still warm, the custard's still a little bit soft. Mm. Yeah, we couldn't we couldn't resist we couldn't wait another half an hour i mean <laughs> and obviously you want to go back they're really good aren't they mm. excellent definitely do this one please do this one because you you will not regret it perfect perfect with clementines yeah i reckon you could use any citrus oh yeah you could do a lemon wine you could all those kind of things so yeah, if passion got, fruit would work absolutely so if you've got leftover citrus stuff yep you know rather than bin it work, lemon and lime will work yeah. combination rather than bin it make custard tart zest it and custard tart it yeah beautiful you can all make a big one as well to you be can. honest you can make a big one and just make a large size custard tart with the same pastry yeah roll it out bigger put it in a, a flan case or whatever loose bottom case yep. just obviously cook it longer just keep an eye on it but it's lovely yeah lovely i do think they'll be better when they're properly cold mm. But, you know, but yeah, delicious. Absolutely. We like to do the ending because I've got a mouthful. Okay, so thanks for joining us again. This is coming up now to the end of our. We're not far off now. Christmas build up, thank yeah. goodness. I know. You, Love it, you all. It has but, you you know. I'm sorry about this. Um, so make sure you're subscribed. If you're not, please do. If you know anybody that would be interested, please ask them to subscribe too. I'm pretty sure this one goes out on Thursday. So tomorrow we've got Margarita's yum cocktail. Yum. Not sure if it's yum yum with you, but it's worth watching. <laughs> um, and then we're doing something saucy on the weekend. We are. We are. So hit the, the notification bell, come and join us. A few more days yet left to go, but we are getting up towards Christmas. It's nearly Christmas. It it's is. nearly my birthday. Woo -hoo -hoo. I know. So, see you all again soon, guys. See Bye you tomorrow. Everybody. Big soon. Bye bye.